Each version is indigenous to a society. They are called legends. They are called myths. Some call them fable. To some, they are religious stories. And they are true human history to another. The title The Great Flood is a story mostly used to tell about the Hebrew flood story from the book of Genesis. The Hebrew decide to return the universe to its pre-creation states of watery chaos and remake it through a small group of people who survived it by living on Noah's Ark for around 370 days. Most ancient civilizations, which includes Mesopotamia, Babylonia, Greek, Egypt, Choir, Yoruba, and many others, talk about a time in human history shortly after creation when a great flood was sent by a god to destroy it, and only few humans managed to survive. And while people have tried to fold different flood stories, by either tagging them an allegory of different catastrophic events or myths. Others think they did happen, just that the stories had become faulty and as variations, as a result of it being told by different generations or some other reasons. For example, in the Babylonian Great Flood story, the Supreme God became fed up of the noises you immense me. So he planned on destroying mankind with flood. Another god, Enki, warned Atrasis, who happened to be a good man, of an impending flood and instructed him to build an ark. The rest of the story went like that of Noah in the Hebrew version. Please note that the Babylonians had different versions of this story. In an account of the Greeks, Zeus was displeased with the human population because they had sacrificed the boy to him. He told Deucalion, the son of Prometheus, to construct an ark for himself and his wife. And there was nine days of flooding. The world was destroyed and the ark rested on top of Mount Penasus. When the waters receded, Deucalion and his wife offered the sacrifice to Zeus to learn how to repopulate the earth. All of these stories have some things in common and they include that humans sinned. There was flooding, the ark, the ark rested on the mountain and there was a sacrifice. Also, in the case of Yoruba flood story, there was a flood, which of course was brought to destroy everything, and there was a sacrifice, though it's not humans that sin, but a domain clash between the gods. But just before we examine that of Yoruba narration, I am going to mention the Egyptian version of a god's attempt to destroy the world, which is not of a flood but a lioness a dead goddess. Ra, the sun god, grew angry with humanity due to their disobedience and lack of respect. He decided to unleash his fiery wrath upon them by sending his lioness a dead the goddess Ator to Earth. Ator was unleashed with the intention of wiping out humanity, but a rampage became so destructive that Ra soon realized she was causing too much chaos and bloodshed. In order to prevent her from completely annihilating mankind, Ra devised a plan to stop Atos' rampage by mixing beer with wine to create a red liquid that resembled blood. He poured this liquid on the ground in her path. As Atos left, Ra used his cunning to find a way to bring her back. He instructed his followers to gather large quantities of beer and mix it with red wine to create more blood-like substance. When Arthur woke, 
and saw the blood, she began drinking again, becoming even more intoxicated. Eventually, she transformed into the peaceful and loving goddess she was known to be, rather than the fierce lioness. There are many African great flood stories like that, but in the Yoruba version, before creation, the god Olorun ruled the sky, and the god Olokun ruled the earth, which is filled with only waters. One day in the sky domain, the god Obatala gained permission to descend to the waters to create dry land and creatures to live on it. After creating the land, he became bored and drank too much wine from the pantry he had created. Then while drunk, he created new creatures in his general image, some of whom were understandably imperfect. The new humans built villages and great cities, and the gods were happy with Obatala's work. All the gods, but Olokun, who owns the water, he sees what he saw as Obatala's intrusion into our territory. One day, while Obatala was away on a visit to the sky, Olokun decided to restore his domain back to what it used to be, so he used his ocean to flood the land, killing many people and destroying their settlements. The people begged the trickster issue to go up to heaven to tell the gods what was happening and to beg for help. He should agree to this, but only if sacrifices were made to him and to Obatala. When this was done, he should carry the message to the sky, and soon Olorun's son, Onmila, and other gods commissioned Ogu, the god of iron, to make a long chain, which they later used in trapping Olokun. With this, they were able to restore the lands taken over by Olokun. Even after he was free from the chain, till today, each time he remembers the event, he becomes angry and impartially causes flood in some parts of the world. This story looks like a tale that will be narrated to children by the moonlight, but the truth is, if there has never been a flood that almost destroyed everything, could it be a coincidence that most cultures of the world have something like this to say? Let me know in the comment section and please do like and share this video.